Here's the idea is that we have a box on the back of a truck. Look at this, I'm even doing wheel wells today. My drawing is really increasing. There's our truck. All right. Um, it's a box of mass M. All right. We're told that the static friction is 0 0.75. And what we're trying to, and you know, the truck is going along at some speed that we're not actually given. Um, what we're trying to find is the maximum acceleration that he can, that, that basically he can do, that the truck can do, um, so that uh, the, the box doesn't slide. Okay. Before we get too much into this, we're going to have to just think really briefly about what is actually happening. Um, okay. So the, the, everything's going along with a speed V. We know that from our, our first law stuff, that um, even if the truck starts to stop, this box wants to keep going. Uh, the question is, well, what keeps it from going? Uh, of course, this is this static friction that we have here um, that's acting between the box and uh, the, the, the flatbed of the truck um, that keeps it from going. So one thing just to note is that uh, the, um, the acceleration that the, uh, when this thing isn't sliding, the acceleration experienced by the truck is the same as the acceleration experienced by uh, this box. So, um, so what we're trying to do is find kind of what conditions we can have uh, that basically uh, allow that acceleration to happen. Um, and of course, what's going to happen is that if the acceleration is so fast that uh, the, that that it can't that that it overcomes basically the static friction that we have here, the thing will start sliding and kind of keep moving. Um, even if you don't know much of that, uh, my 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 recommendation in any of these types of problems is to start with a free body diagram. Um, or a force diagram, if you prefer. Um, and so I always just write these FBDs again. We talk about the ways to start out all of our problems. With force problems, we always start out with a free body diagram. Um, and again, with free body diagrams, one of the really important things is to only draw a free body diagram of one thing at a time. In this case, I'm just doing the crate, the mass M crate, okay? Um, what is on this, uh, what forces are on this crate? Again, we're on Earth, so if we're on Earth, we always have the force of gravity, okay? Um, the thing is resting on something, all right? It's sitting on something, in this case, a flatbed of the truck, that's pushing up, or if, if it wasn't pushing up, of course, the crate would go down through the truck, so we know that there's this normal force going up like this, okay, kind of, or is starting from there. Um, and then finally, uh, we have um, the force that's keeping the box from sliding. So this is the static friction. One thing that's always a little difficult with friction is trying to figure out what direction it goes in. Uh, in this case, uh, we can just think about um, uh, what's actually happening. So the box is going at a constant speed this way. Um, if, if we were to let it go forever, it would go in the right direction for, for forever. We want it to stop. We basically want it to stop moving. So what we're doing is accelerating it this way, okay? Or, we, or we're decelerating the, um, the box. So that, that's another way to think about it. Uh, basically, we're, we're causing acceleration in a negative, what I'm, what I'm going to call the negative x direction, all right, if I set up my coordinate system here. Um, and so our friction is going to be in opposition to the way that the acceleration is, or in the same direction as acceleration has happened. So this is our static friction. Let me get some vector symbols on these guys. Okay, um, or in other words, the, 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 the friction is keeping the box from sliding forward, which is kind of its natural tendency according to the first law. Okay, so that's our free body diagram. Um, now, the, the second thing we always do, so the first thing we always do in free body in, in, in force problems is draw the free body diagram. The second thing we do is always draw or always put down the equations for um, the, the uh, Newton's second law, which is, of course, F, F net is equal to MA um, for each direction. And you can maybe decide which uh, direction you want to do first. I'm just going to do X because, um, because I know that what I'm eventually trying to find is something about this static friction. So I can write that F net of X is equal to, and because it's going in the negative X direction, I'm going to put this as minus the force of static friction. Okay, that's the only force that's going in the X direction. You see that there's nothing else. Everything else is going in the Y. And so that's all we have. That's all of our forces. And so that has to be equal to mass of the crate times the acceleration in the X direction. Okay. 
Now we know something about for about static friction. Um, in your book, uh, hopefully you've read that uh, the maximum static friction that can be provided uh, between two surfaces has to is is related to mu s, which is the static friction coefficient, uh, which is what we were actually given up here, um, and the normal force. Okay, normal force is basically how 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 tightly together basically the or how 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 much the 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 bottom of the truck is pushing on the the crate um, which you can imagine is, uh, is related to how how um how much force basically the, the static friction can can combine anyway if you're confused about that please go ahead and look that up in the um in the book but this is our equation for static friction for the maximum um if it can provide less than that but this is kind of the, the maximum amount of friction that the static uh, friction can provide, uh, maximum amount of force that static friction can provide. So let's go ahead and write that in. We get minus mu s fn, okay, I just plugged in for fs, is equal to ma x. And that's about as far as we can go with that. Uh, we don't know anything about fn yet. Um, we, we, know the, we don't actually know the mass, we know mu s, we don't know AX, so let's just circle our unknowns. Okay. Oh, that's a known. Sorry. Let's just underline that one. And uh, we actually don't know the mass. Okay. Um, okay, so that doesn't look that good. We have uh, one equation, three unknowns. That's always a little disturbing. Um, let's go to F net Y. Now F net Y, we just have two forces. We have the normal force and we have gravity. Gravity is going in the negative Y direction, so I'm gonna put a minus on that. Those are the only two forces we have. So again, that's equal to mass times the acceleration in the Y direction. Of course, this box isn't going up or down. So not only does it not have any acceleration in the Y direction, it doesn't have any velocity in the Y direction. Um, so this is zero. And so this is equal to zero. The other way to say that is that if we solve for this, Fn is equal to Fg. And we always know what Fg is. Fg is all, always mass times gravity. So that's what Fn is right there. So let's try to plug this back in here and hopefully it'll help us out a little bit. Um, so we, now we have mu s. We're gonna plug in for Fn. Fn is equal to mg. and that's equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. Now you notice we have something kind of nice that happens. We have a mass on each side of this, so they actually cancel out. Okay, so it turns out the fact that we didn't know the mass isn't that important. And now look at this. We know ms or mu s, we know g. We don't, we're trying to find ax. Now we just plug in the numbers and we get our answer. Uh, I'm not gonna do that with the calculator, but I will just say that ax is approximately equal to if we call g you know 10 and mu s is 0.75 then our answer is going to be somewhere around 7.5 or 7.4 let's say um, uh, meters per second squared okay so we should get an answer like that hopefully that's helpful and uh, good luck and if you have any questions come see me